In today's video, we are trying out some experiments with powders and fire. Can we make a fire tube with household ingredients? We've got ourselves a nice tall plastic tube here, and as you can probably see, a few different cooking ingredients. And we're not making cookies, but we're trying something out. This was brought to our attention by our cameraman. And we're gonna see if we can replicate a theoretical kitchen hazard. The idea is that even with a small flame, if the right ingredients fall down onto it, you could end up with something of a fireball that could cause a lot of potential burn damage. Here's the basic idea. You know that fire goes up and some cooking ingredients are more flammable than you might think. We want to combine these two things and see if we can contain them in a fire tube. We've actually shown you some things on this channel that burn incredibly well, namely powdered sugar and cinnamon. Uh, I have heard of different things that you can use at campfires. You throw a handful of this stuff in the fire, it causes a little bit of a fireball. This was first brought to my attention by my older sister, who was the first person who taught me that it's fun to throw things in fire. Great example, Lindsay, thank you. She showed me how to do that with both powdered milk and with coffee creamer, which have a very fun sort of result when you throw them in the fire. Anything that is a small particle burns incredibly fast. And so all of these different uh, ingredients that we have here today are going to burn differently. And I want to see how well they work. We've got our fire extinguisher. Yep. That'll be close to hand. Two. We actually we have, have two, two actually. fire extinguishers <laughs> nearby. And then we've got this tube, which we're going to try and use to contain everything yep. and a couple of candles. And we're just going to try all the different powders out. So when we've done this in the past with powdered sugar and cinnamon, we've actually been out in the desert and we've thrown them into a bonfire and you see how big that is. We want to see if we can just contain it in a single tube. You've seen us make desktop fire tornado. And this is kind of the same concept. But instead of having a fuel source down the bottom, we are pouring the fuel source through the top. I think we should start with flour because that's what we were told works when we first heard about this. So let's get our single little tea light candle going. Okay. Now, as Mark was explaining to us, this has been used in demonstrations before to show why having a candle in your kitchen might be considered a fire hazard, where say you've got flour up high in a cupboard or something and you open it, it spills out, hits the candle on your counter and causes a fireball. So that's kind of what we want to test. All right, to try and get like a nice even spread of this stuff, I'm just gonna be shaking the flour out through the sieve down onto our candle. <laughs> hmm. You killed it. More candles. More candles, you more think? More candles. All right, we can try more candles. And let's raise this up a little bit higher so there's a little more oxygen. We had a successful test. We were just trying, we weren't actually filming, we were just kind of testing things out and the it was exciting. The cameras were there, but yeah. uh, so we got some footage, but it was a little more energetic than we were hoping for. And so <laughs> we're now going to do this with it on the floor so we have more space, hopefully less likely to incinerate the ceiling. And if it yeah. hits the ceiling too much again, then we're gonna go outside and the rest of this and hope we'll that we can find a darkness is. spot. So I'm just gonna try this again, shaking a bunch of sh flour in and uh, standing back a bit more. There you go. Beautiful. Nice. That worked great. Yep. And it didn't hit the ceiling, got to about here, shot out of the tube, but you know, we're no longer a foot from the ceiling. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. So this is actually something that is considered a huge hazard in factories that manufacture anything that is in a powdered form. More specifically, custard factories have been known to explode from having particulates in the air. Something as simple as a static shock can set it off and cause a huge explosion because of powder simply floating around. So that's kind of what we're seeing happening here. I've got some boric acid, which when mixed with methanol, makes fire burn green. And I'm curious to see if we mix some of this with the flour, will we get any green color in our pillar? Interesting, okay. So, I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna try. Yep. Flour with boric acid. Hmm, apparently there was too much boric acid, <laughs> not enough flour. And while the boric acid will combine with methanol and then it will burn green, it by itself is not a flammable powder, at least that I have seen. I'm gonna go ahead and say that the boric acid is not flammable unless it's dissolved into a flammable solution. So while we got decent results with the candle, uh, every time we do this, we end up pouring a bunch of powder on the candle and it gets mixed into the wax and the wick. And then when we try and relight the candles, they don't like to light. 
and they just have like a barely burning little flame, which isn't quite enough. So at the moment, we're gonna be using a lighter that's just taped down to stay on as sort of a longer burning candle. And when flour lands on the lighter, we're able to just blow all of the flour off. It doesn't get mixed into melted wax. I heard yeah, little tiny bits of but it, it didn't want to catch. Go faster with it maybe? Like I could try, fun. yeah. It didn't it didn't come out of yeah. the the sieve very well. Yeah. I don't think hmm, okay. the powdered sugar is flammable at the same stoichiometry as the flour. Stoichiometry is the percentage of mix of flour or sugar or whatever versus air. So it needs to have the right amount of air and the right amount of whatever else is burning. Too much flour, you know, if I grab a handful of flour, throw it on, it doesn't do anything. If I just dribble a tiny bit, it doesn't do anything. If I shake it generously through the sieve, quickly down on, it clearly does a lot. So it's, it's that mix that matters. Move on to the next one, dry milk, instant. Instant non-fat dry milk. So it's the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst as far as flavor is concerned, in my mind. Oh, Ooh, I saw a little bit. Already, so be very careful with this one. Whew. Holy cow! This stuff is insane. Powdered milk does not take much at all. I was just curious. I was like, oh, I wonder if this is going to happen to be something that doesn't need as much. And so I started out with just a little bit I'm and very a little bit did. is all that it took. Oh, Not wow. the same, but it's really easy with the powdered milk. Yes. All right. So this is the other one. The first two, like I said, that my sister Lindsay taught me about was coffee creamer and dry milk. So we've tried dry milk. That absolutely is more flammable than the flour on its own. How do it tastes better than the dry milk plain. It's even more flammable. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I went for a secondary fireball. Yeah. Like after the first one dropped, I did another one. So like, <laughs> maybe not the safest thing, but it worked really well. Okay. So cinnamon, again, I'm going to start with very little, see what kind of, if we get a result out of it, and then I'll move up from there. That's fun. No fireball, but like the individual little particles of cinnamon that do get lit, they spark quite nicely. So it looks like they're, it's just throwing sparks off of the lighter. I kind of want to try like a, a best of both worlds thing, and I want to try mixing some cinnamon in with the coffee creamer. The ones we've had success with so far has been the flour. Obviously, that's the one you normally do demonstrations and tests with our dry milk, our coffee creamer, and the cinnamon on its own, which was kind of surprising to us. What surprised me the most here is that the powdered sugar didn't work. Uh, boric acid on its own, I didn't think was gonna work without being dissolved into another flammable solution. But as Nate said, we kind of wanna try best of both worlds now. So we're gonna combine the coffee creamer and the cinnamon to get a slightly larger fire. <laughs> You're getting the dust outside of it now. So there you go, a very good example of why maybe a kitchen candle isn't gonna be your best bet. If you have it, keep it away from your cupboards, keep it away from any of your powdered goods. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that button to subscribe so you never miss out on the fun. We'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.